Good afternoon. And welcome to St. Jude the Apostle Parish as we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. From five barley loaves and two fish, Jesus was able to provide a wonderful feast for thousands of people. We gather today for the Eucharist feast where we are invited to have our fill of the bread of eternal life. May the miracle we witness today bring us to a deeper faith in the Lord and his saving gift to us. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Table of Plenty, number 312 in the Breaking Bread Book. That is number 312. Please rise. of heaven and earth come to the table of plenty god will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty oh come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends i wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and eat without money. My feast of gladness will feed your spirit with faith and fullness of love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you came to this role and preached the good news of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you destroyed death and restored life to your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, moved with pity for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Receive our prayer, 
O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing is firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's readings can be found on page 188 in the front part of the Breaking Bread book. That's page 188. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elijah, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner, manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of the Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them, and filled to her wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the role. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All of us have an interest in numbers in some way or the other. We check the numbers that reveal if our favorite 
sports team won or lost, how our team ranks against others in the same league. We are concerned about the numbers that indicate the condition of our health, such as our temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation, and cholesterol levels. We pay attention to the daily numbers that indicate whether the financial markets went up or down and how our investments were affected. We are drawn to the numbers on surveys and opinion polls that show what our fellow Americans think about various issues. But our readings today reveal the divine power in numbers. In the first reading, Prophet Elisha is given an offering of 20 loaves of bread. The prophet immediately tells his servant to take the bread and give it to the people to eat. Despite his doubts that the amount of bread is enough, the servant does as ordered and hundred starving people were fed. We are told that when they had eaten, there was some leftovers. These seemingly ordinary numbers, 20 loaves and 100 people, show that the extraordinary power of God working through prophet Elisha. In today's gospel, Jesus also works with numbers. He is moved by the empty stomachs of the multitude following him, listening to his teachings. So Jesus takes five loaves of bread and two fish from a young boy, blesses the food and shares it with the crowd. Astonishingly, 5,000 people were fed. The numbers in the first reading are dwarfed by those in the gospel reading. Prophet Elisha had one loaf for 20 people, and Jesus had one loaf for every thousand people. But after the miracle, all were fed. There were 12 baskets of leftovers. The abundant numbers in the gospel reveal the power and the divinity of Jesus who knew from the beginning what he was going to do. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Jesus continues to perform even greater miracles than this. His numbers far exceed those in our gospel. Through his church and his living presence in the Holy Eucharist, Jesus is feeding not only thousands, but millions of hungry souls with his word and the Holy Eucharist. That's why Jesus says, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This ongoing divine work of Jesus should reassure each of us that God's care is unwavering and his generosity is limitless. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus feeds people with his word which is proclaimed in the liturgy, preached by missionaries across the globe, taught by catechists, spread through the social media, and passed on from one generation of the faithful Christians to the next. This mission continues. Billions of people have heard his word over the past 2,000 years. Through the priestly ministry of the church, Jesus does far more than giving bread to 5,000 people as he did in the gospel. He gives 
his very body and blood in holy communion to millions every day but let us remember one thing in this miracle of the multiplication of loaves the fact is that the people who were present for this miracle in the gospel had to make an effort to be there first they followed jesus to the other side of the sea of galilee and then they followed him up a mountain in a remote area this is significant because it tells us that a miracle of such great magnitude could only take place for those who had faith and acted on that faith jesus could have easily performed this miracle in the temple of jerusalem or in a synagogue where people doubted him if he did that then many of his critics would have seen his mighty power with their own eyes jesus could have also done this miracle in nazareth his hometown in the presence of his, his extended family and friends perhaps if he had done this then they would have come to believe in him but jesus did not do this incredible miracle in places where faith was lacking this is very important for us to remember instead he went to a remote area where only those who had truly wanted to be with him and they were the only ones who were present and they were the only ones who witnessed this great miracle all because of their faith and all because they made an effort to be there unfortunately even today many people view their participation in the mass as a duty that they must fulfill on the weekend rather than an invitation to share in the super abundant life the only way we discover the super abundant life given to us through the holy eucharist is by imitating this faith of the people whom jesus fed on that mountain in the same way my dear brothers and sisters the journey we make to participate in the holy eucharist is one of faith and the mountain we climb is one of prayer and unless we believe deeply in the transforming power of the holy eucharist seek it out faithfully every week and do so prayerfully we will never be fed in this super abundant life just as jesus performed the small boy's simple gifts of five barley loaves and two fish into a feast for thousands so he transforms our simple gift of bread and wine into a spiritual feast for all of us gathered here and all of them gather in elsewhere in the churches as bread of life and cup of salvation therefore every mass that we go to is a miracle miracle far greater than the miracle jesus performed on that day therefore my dear brothers and sisters the way the lord works in the holy eucharist is how he works for the rest of our lives are we ready to give him that little faith are we ready to give him our little presence to him just as he gives his presence fully to us in his body blood soul and divinity every time that he gives he gives 100% and all that he asks of us is a faith the size of a mustard seed therefore my dear brothers and sisters to witness this miracle of our lifetime 
and witness it any time that we go to mass the place is here the time is the mass the gift is body and blood of jesus and the reward is eternal life amen Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. and i look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen let us offer our prayers to god who answers all our needs that the holy spirit may help all members of the church to live in a manner worthy of their baptismal call let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that our generous god may ensure that all who are hungry be fed Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples be open to God's gift of life, build up their families and bless their parents with the noble title of grandparents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That God may sustain grandparents who are living with pain or distress, either physically or emotionally. and that grandchildren may not forget their grandparents and give them the precious gifts of their time and love we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for those who have died this past week especially for the pros of the soul of sister rotina and those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to them we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for the north the needs within our prayer boxes the needs expressed through the prayer chain and for those held within the silence of our heart let us pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for the intention of this mass including those for the repose of the soul of sister robert bertina we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer father you provide food for the journey Hear and answer the prayers we offer you this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being presented and the altar is being set, please sing our offertory hymn number 316 as we gather at your table. That's number 316. <laughs> Nourish us with sacred story 
do we claim it as our own? Teach us through this holy banquet how to make life's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us, Christ, your great compassion to forgive as you forgive. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Gracious Spirit, help us summon other guests to share that feast. Where triumphant love will welcome those who have last and least. There no more will envy blind us, nor will pride our peace destroy, as we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by, for by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to your Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quite through on our life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. O oh, him and with him and in him, O oh, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. But the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our, Our Father, Father Lord, Lord in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe. Today's hymn for communion is number 344, Gift of Finest Wheat. That's number 344. the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat come give to us O saving Lord the bread of life to eat as when the shepherd calls his sheep they know and heed his voice so when you call your family Lord we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord, the bread of 
life to eat With joyful lips we sing to you Our praise and gratitude That you should count us worthy, Lord To share this heavenly food You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord The bread of life to eat Is not the cup we bless and share The blood of Christ our poured Do not one cup, one loaf declare Our one in the Lord You satisfy the hungry heart With gift of finest wheat Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord The bread of life to eat The mystery of your presence, Lord no mortal tongue can tell Whom all the world cannot contain Comes in our hearts to dwell You satisfy the hungry heart With gift of finest wheat Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord the bread of life to eat You give yourself to us, O Lord Then selfless let us be To serve each other in your name In truth and charity You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord The bread of life to eat The announcements for this week. Thank you all who volunteered at our EAA food booth, including the chair and the co-chairs, 
the number of volunteers and those who took care of EAA guests at the parish office and the rest. We could not have done it without your help. And let me tell you, I know you may smile or laugh about it, but still, your reward is great in heaven. Because every time I say that, you keep smiling, <laughs> but it comes true. And I mean it, I'm sure the Lord will reward you great in heaven for your great sacrifice and generous service. And I was told, last week I was announcing that we need some more volunteers to help with this food booth. Our guests and visitors who were at the weekend mass, one of the couples, they volunteered at our food booth. How nice it is. How witnessing it is that, you know, we serve the universal church this way. And I keep hearing all the stories, people from all over the world, people from Italy, Switzerland, everywhere. And it is so, so good to meet with all these people, serve all these people, and we all know we don't run that food booth for any kind of, you know, making money. It's more about our service and our witness to the world. And thank you all for doing that. I wish I could spend more time there, but one time that I was there, the ladies did not want me in the food booth. <laughs> they just threw me out and then gave me an ice cream to eat under the tent. <laughs> Thank you so much again. And I, we pray for all our guests and volunteers this week that you may have safe travels home. All the volunteers who help our parish through their various services and ministries, both big and small, throughout the year are invited to the parish annual volunteer appreciation dinner on Thursday, August 22nd at 5 p.m. in Leona Hall. RSVP is appreciated to help us prepare enough food for everyone. As you may have noticed in the bulletin, Bishop Ricken has mandated that all the extraordinary Eucharistic ministers across the diocese undergo the Eucharistic ministers' training. We have one in the city at St. Raphael's on August 13th at 6 p.m. Those that must go through this training are Eucharistic ministers at Mass, care ministers to the house, homebound, Eucharistic ministers at the hospitals and nursing homes, any individual bringing a pix to Mass to bring Eucharist to the family member or a friend. The reason for this is that Bishop is trying to kind of uh, instill in all of us who handle the most important thing, this is the mystery. We are having Jesus in our hands when we bring the communion to others so that we handle it reverently and then do it in different situations. Sometimes we do not know how to handle that in different situations. And this training will help us in all the situations how we <coughs> handle this mystery in our hands. With the bishop's permission, each pastor will commission all those who completed the training to continue this beautiful ministry you're already doing. Registration is required. Please see the bulletin for details. Thank you, and God bless you. Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, 
Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is number 209. Now thank we all our God. That's number 209. <laughs> See you.